Good evening, everyone. Uh, at, at this point in time, we do not have a quorum and therefore cannot hold a meeting. However, there are some ceremonial uh, events that we can handle at this time. And should a fourth show up a little bit later, we'll start the official meeting. So since you're here, I would ask that you rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge, to, uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Let me say for the record, at least for those at home, uh, if you weren't in Pottstown since last Saturday, you missed a whole bunch of events, starting with Nostalgia Night. Uh, Sunday there were events. Monday was the, the pre-Fourth of July events. And yesterday was phenomenal. So I'm glad for everyone who was here to say, I picked Pottstown. Here's where we're going to celebrate. Uh, the first thing uh, I would like to do is ask the chief come up uh, this is for the swearing in of Officer Timothy Coughlin. Wow. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, fresh out of Montgomery County. Police Academy, Tim Coughlin, uh, he, um, we sent him there. He did a great job. He was a, he was a very good student for them. We got really good reports back on him. And uh, he actually scored first in his class in marksmanship. So that's pretty good. Uh, so tonight I'd like to swear him in. Uh, the mayor would like to swear him in. So I'm going to ask Tim and his wife, Jessica, to come to the front, please. been appointed as a police officer with the borough of Pottstown in the county of Montgomery and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I Timothy Coughlin do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support, that I will support, obey and defend, obey and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United the States, the Constitution of the Commonwealth, the Constitution of the Commonwealth, and enforce the laws thereof, and enforce the laws thereof, including those of the borough of Pottstown those of the borough of Pottstown. And that I will support. And that I will support. Obey and defend. Obey and defend. And enforce these laws. And enforce these laws. Without consideration. Without consideration. To a person's race. To a person's race. Color. Color. Sex. Sex. Religious creed. Religious creed. Sexual orientation. Sexual orientation. Age. Age. National origin. National origin. Ancestry. Ancestry. Handicap. Handicap. Or disability. Or disability. I swear to discharge the duties of my office. I swear to discharge the duties of my office. With fidelity and honor. With fidelity and honor. And on witness this day, July 5th, with the corporation that the oath of witness was administered today, signed by myself and Chief Richard Trump. Thank you.
police officer's warrant. I'm just reading to all who shall see these present greetings. This is to certify that I, Sharon B. Thomas, mayor of the borough of Pottstown in the county of Montgomery and Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the borough charter as amended and supplemented by the General Borough Act of 1915 and supplements authorizing a police force for boroughs and for other purposes and pursuant to appointment as a police officer by town council of this borough have this day sworn Timothy Coughlin as a police officer of said borough and that he is authorized and empowered to make arrests upon probable cause with or without a warrant subject nevertheless to the laws of Pennsylvania and of the United States and that said Timothy Coughlin shall serve as such police officer during the pleasure of the mayor and town council. Again, Okay, how about something else we can do without having an official meeting? At this time, I would certainly like to honor and thank Bill and Sue Krauss, who were selected as our Grand Marshals for the 4th of July Parade. And would you all give Bill and his wife a round of applause? And now I think our number one filmmaker in town, Mr. Tellis, uh, you have a presentation for us? The American Legion, what a cool old truck. All wheel drive, made to go through all terrains. Followed by a beautiful open car, uh, VFW Post 5203, and uh, it's about a 44 open car, so that'd be World War II. There's the parade marshal, Bill and Sue Krauss. Bill and Sue Krauss, I've known them for many years. They are uh, responsible for a lot of activities here in Pottstown, the oldie swing dance at Sunnybrook, and thanks a lot. They really, really are Pottstown people, true and blue. Patriot Brass. Um, been in business a long time. They started out on Hanover Street and we moved down there. They got some nice trucks and they had one of my favorites, this old American La France. That's what they used to look like back in the 30s, 20s.
Good job to tell us, Vision. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, and we'll pick up at item five. No, pres to to oh. I'm calling the meeting to order. At, uh, what would that be? About 7.18. I'll pick up at item five as a presentation, the MS4 application to, conser to Conservation District. Uh, Tom Weld. Thank you. Welcome. I'd like to be talking about the uh, MS4 program that we have in Pottstown. And MS4 stands for Storm Source Separation System. That's for, for us, and that's how we reference it. Uh, right now, what we're, the agenda that we're looking at is go over the introduction and background, the MS4 general permit, uh, the pollution reduction plan total maximum daily load, the TMDL with the PCBs, and how we're going to implement it, and any questions that you may have. Pottstown. Okay. Thank you. All right. The uh, <coughs> MS4 program has been in existence in Pottstown since 2003, uh, and it consists of essentially uh, six minimum control measures that are known as MCMs. Uh, the first one is public education and outreach. Uh, number two is public involvement and participation. And we have illicit discharge and, and detention, detection and elimination, construction and sites, and stormwater work, which is essentially the county handles that for us because we have an agreement for them to review our plans. And then the post-construction and then the prevention of, uh, of preventative good uh, housekeeping for municipal operations. Those items are addressed and handled by staff, and reports have to be given periodically to DEP. Uh, this, this next permit criteria round, the criteria have now been expanded to a PRP plan and a TMDL plan that we have to deal with. <coughs> okay. As I mentioned, the uh, Pottstown MS4 facilities have been, in cover, have been covered by a general permit since 2003. We have a general permit which is different than an individual permit. The general permit is basically where we really don't have a lot of problems, not strong, strong problems, and we are following what DEP has laid out for general permits. Individual permits, you have to create everything yourself. Uh, the, Current per, uh, the current permit expires in uh, July 31st of 2018, uh, and the renewal application, which is what we're talking about today, uh, is due September 16th of 2017. Uh, Pottstown must apply for it if this is an NPDES permit, which is no different than the wastewater treatment plant permit that we have. There are, there are conditions and there are penalties if we don't follow it. 
Uh, the June permit requires uh, the creation of a stormwater uh, management plan, which essentially are the six MCMs that we currently are dealing with. However, the new permit application is going to have a new wrinkle, which is a PRP, Pollution Reduction Plan. DEP, in their evaluation in creating this next permit round, has identified that there is a, an impaired, an unnamed stream in Pottstown that discharges to the Manitoni Creek. And that unnamed stream is locally known as Goose Run Subdivision, that's Subbasin. Also, as part of the next round permit, will be to uh, continue with the TMDL, which is total, total minimum daily load requirements for PCBs uh, in, on levels in the Schuylkill River. DEP and EPA have done mass studies for the past 10 years on not only the Delaware, but also the Schuylkill, on PCB levels in the Schuylkill. And the last permit round, which we are finishing up now, uh, we had to do certain things to address PCBs. Most of all those items have been, have been done, uh, with the exception of sampling, which, the, which EPA basically and DEP basically said, just hold it, because we don't have our act together. Now, they have the sampling issues now in the next permit. So this is going to be a relatively easy task for us, because most of the work on the TMDLs that we're going to have to deal with are addressed in MCM number three. The area that we really are concerned about today and talk about is the uh, impaired subbasin, which is Goose Run, which is basically outlined in the dark blue. This is the study area that we have to deal with. The PRP for sedimentation is, requires a, 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 to prepare uh, a stormwater best management plan in order to achieve the pollution reduction. Uh, best management plan is essentially using P, uh, best management tasks that the EPA and industry has accepted as acceptable options that we can use. The borough, part of this meeting today is essentially a public meeting and getting the issue of this new permit application out to the public. As part of what we had to do is create a report the report is, is in draft form, the report is online, and Jimmy has copies of the report if anybody would like to read it. The idea here is we, the public has 30 days to, to read the report and make comments before we submit it to the uh, Part of what we had to do is first had to identify the sedimentation problem that DEP identified for us, is that we had to determine using DEP criteria how much sediment do we actually have in the Goose Run subbasin? Sub well, it turns out we have 521,973 pounds per year of sediment in that basin that goes into the stream. Part of what our criteria is, we have to reduce that in a five-year period by 10%. That means we have to have BMPs in place, whether they be construction issues or operational issues, uh, within five years to reduce that load by 52,197 pounds. This is more academic, you know, these numbers we come up with are basically the concepts that DEP has agreed to and, and studied. So the numbers are based on academic evaluations. Uh, we, in in doing, building, developing the plan, we uh, looked at multiple options. Uh, we looked at uh, areas, basically, and cost. Uh, we evaluated and ranked them on cost, effectiveness, sightability, and, and also eligibility for grants. That was a big item we were looking at. Uh, Pottstown's Goose Run is a tough one because it's basically an urbanized area. And we don't have a lot of options in which we can put sedimentation basins in and so forth because we, we just don't have the land and what land was available had restrictions on it that we could not use that land. Uh, so consequently, working with uh, Justin and Doug Gerger, we came up with some of the concepts that we're going to be talking about. Uh, the proposed BMP selected to install two water quality chambers and one filtration trench. A 
keeping in mind that we already have in the system a water quality chamber, which, seem, which seems to be a very effective force. Uh, Pottstown has, has a grant of the two that we're going to be proposing. Pottstown already has a grant for one. Now, we got this grant, I think, last year, but we cannot implement that water quality chamber until 2018 because you can't get a credit for anything you do before the next permit period, according to the DEP and EPA's criteria. So we're ready to roll with one of them with a full grant. The other chamber and uh, infiltrate in the infiltration trench, we talked to Montgomery County uh, Conservation District and talked to them what we were trying to do. And it appears that what we're proposing is going to be grant eligible. They seem to accept the concept of what we were talking about as potentially a grant. We have not made an application for anything, uh, but the concept seems to be approved by them for this. This is sort of a quick overview of where we are. This yellow line, which is kind of hard to see, is the Goose Run Basin. And we have two locations where we're putting the water quality. Uh, one is in Airy Street east of Hanover. Number two is 4th Street west of Hanover. Now, what is a, a water quality basin? Water quality basin is essentially a precast chamber where the water, the stormwater flows in into this chamber right here, which is separated from the second chamber by a perforated uh, plate. All of the grease and debris, coke bottles, whatever that floats, comes out in the first chamber. The water then flows through this perforated uh, baffle and then into another, into the second chamber where we have an inclined plate settler. As the water goes up the plate settler, the sedimentation comes out and is deposited in this area here. And then the borough staff has to come in and clean that out, but the actual storm water during a storm will flow back out of the inlet, uh, out of the outlet pipe uh, after it has been treated or separated. And that device, as I mentioned, we already have one of them in the system, and it seems to be working well. Um, it has to be cleaned uh, like anything else. It's, uh, the staff has to clean it periodically. And that's being proposed, that device is proposed for location one and two. At uh, location one, we cannot get the credits that we need uh, for just by just using the uh, stormwater uh, uh, water quality chamber. So what we had to do was put in an infiltration trench in a portion of that line. An infiltration trench is we're looking in an alley. We excavate a box. Uh, this, is the, this is the main sewer that we intercept. We raise the pipe in from the sewer because what we want is the outlet pipe because all the inlet pipe the water comes in and that goes into finger laterals. Those finger laterals are perforated pipe. And the perforated pipe is where the stormwater, some portion of the stormwater will then percolate down into the ground. If we can't get the full percolation, we have the piping set up that the water fills up to a certain level and then flows out like it would normally. As part of this infiltration trench, uh, on top of that, we would be putting in a, uh, a driving surface aggregate. This is one of the key issues with Montgomery County for, for, uh, for getting a grant. This is a type of material that has been, been developed by Penn State for dirt and gravel roads. There is a, a big push in Montgomery County to get grant work for this type of, uh, of an installation. So we're sort of piggybacking on not only the, P the, uh, the PRPs, but we're trying to get the uh, paving so that we to sort of get a better run as far as them looking at our, our water quality as far as the grant. Now this is uh, the Airy Street, which is location one. Uh, Airy Street, east of Hanover. The yellow defines this drainage area. This is the area that drains down to a point like right here. The red is an existing uh, storm source system. The light blue is the culvert, and the little dark blue is the trench. More detailed show the position here. 
uh, what we're going to do is uh, an airy street. We're going to intercept the existing storm sewer and cap it so that everything on this side of that cap will flow as it does now into the culvert. The yellow point, that's where we're going to put in the water quality chamber. The blue is going to be the uh, infiltration trench, and then that will be then discharged right into the existing culvert. That gives us uh, a, a good application, uh, gives us, I forget exactly, I think like six or some, some percentage of what we need. The other one on, on basin number two uh, is a forestry. This is also the, the yellow is the area which drains to the basin we're talking about. And we can get about two and a half percent of what we need out of this particular installation. The blow up on this is the light blue is your culvert. The red is the existing storm sewer. And all we're going to do here is intercept that storm sewer and put a, a water quality chamber in, pave it, and that's as much as we need to do. That's all well and good, but now the question is, what's the cost going to be? Well, we have two elements we have to deal with in this, in this report. Uh, the PRP, which is a sedimentation issue, whatever we're doing, we have to do it in five years, between 2018 and 2023, it has to be done. The 4th Street, which is this one right here, the 4th Street Chamber, is we estimated $40,000 engineering of about eight, but we already have a grant of $40,000. So that's something we can do right away. So the cost for that is about $8,000 for whatever engineering we need. The Airy Street Water Quality Chamber is, we estimate that to be $66,000, engineering about thirteen, dollars and the, we think we can get a grant for about $15,000. Uh, now, that would put us into about $29,300 for the actual app pocket. And again, that's over a five-year period. Uh, the Airy Street infiltration trench, which we should be done at the same time, uh, is, is about 50 and 11,000 for the engineering and about 50 for the grant. So we have about $100,000 we're anticipating in getting the grant. Uh, if that all works <coughs> out, uh, we basically have $64,000 out of the pocket, assuming that we can get the grants. And that's, again, it's an assumption. <clears throat> the TMDL, which is the PCB issue that we have to deal with, the field work is going to be done under the general permit on the MC, under MCM3, which is essentially after a, after a storm, 48 hours after a storm, you have to go out and look at the inlets in the area where we suspect PCBs. If we see the fact that there is water running in the storm sewer after a storm, there's a problem. And that has to be sampled. If it turns out to be PCBs, you notify DEP, and then they take it from there. Uh, so the field work itself is done by staff. If we have allocated about $10,000, assuming that there may be some sampling along the way. Now, on the TMDL uh, issue, we have between five and 10 years to, to deal with. So that's a, a more protracted system. And we're going to, this is based on what we think is in the permit. When we get the permit next year, we're actually going to determine what the P ultimately comes up with. But they've been working with this TMDL and PCBs for some time. I think they, they basically told me that they, this is what we're doing, but again, it's not the permit. That's a, a quick overview of the, of the program. As I mentioned, the report is with hard copies of the reports with Jenny. Jenny's putting the report on the, the borough website, and we would like uh, any public to look at it and provide comments by August 6th. Once we get the comments, we'll, come, we'll evaluate them, modify the report as necessary, and we have to be submitting the application to DDP by September 16th. Glad to entertain any questions that you may have. I have a question um, for the acronym TMDL. What is that? Okay, so the PRP plan, you said, involves silt and sedimentation, and the second part is regarding the level of PCBs. So is there monitoring at that chamber and then also?
also in the river? No. The only monitoring it will occur for the PCBs if the staff finds, first of all, we, 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 the past permit, we've located all of the known PCB sites in Boston. Build up electric, railroad, national inventory, and our discussion with our staff. If under the general permit, when they go out and do their inspections after a dry weather, or after a rainstorm, significant rainstorm, we find that there is flow in the storm, lab, the storm inlet coming from the site, the PCB identified site. We have to test it. That's all we have to do. And my next question, um, this area of Hanover, weren't these uh, sewer laterals recently expanded though, to accommodate increased capacity for upper pots road housing development? That, that was on the sanitary <coughs> system. A sanitary, not okay. storm sewer. Okay. I just wanted to find out if that were, there were any places where there was any shared utility for cost, even with the townships. Are they going through this process as they, well? They have our joining townships, have the same criteria. Um, upper has a sedimentation where they discharge into the uh, uh, Manitani. I'm not sure about uh, when you get with the west, I'm not sure about that. But uh, I know that you're responsible to take care of the stormwater problem in your political subdivision. Really, with this program, if you go outside your subdivision, you basically have to take care of your work plus whatever else is out there that you would assume. Okay. So we stay within the political boundaries. Okay. I assume the, inst the installation of the chamber should be relatively swift. Correct me that you won't uh, destroy the entire road, just the specifically where it gets set in. And There's three or four manufacturers that will, come, will basically prefab it. So basically, the correct, cut the pipe, make sure you have to get the elevations correct and so forth. But it's hopefully it's just off the truck and it's dropping. It's going to be relatively soon. There was also a question the last time um, about the Hanover Street Center. Who would handle the the, the cave, the parts that are caves, or what are they called? Under Charlotte Street, the arches. Arches. Right. Well, the arches are not part of this program. Okay. It was brought up, though. Yeah. The, the, arch, the arches are where the system that we're talking about discharges into. Okay. Would it be possible for us to have the EAC review the report and, and provide some, some feedback? I mean, I know that it's open to the public, but I think if we ask the, the EAC to review it and, and provide their, their comments, whether, you know, even if they say everything's great. Sure. You know. No, absolutely. The one thing we'd ask is if anybody that's reviewing comes in to the bar or makes any comments, document who they are, because we need to have that documentation when we submit to the DEP so that it's clear. And anybody, we encourage people to give us comments. Yes, yeah. uh, we're going to get um, email uh, jkeller.pottstown.org and I'll, I'll take this off. You'll take care of getting this group? Yeah, I mean, yes. yeah. yeah, we'll send to the case. Send it in there and then it's good to go. Yes. Okay. Anything else, folks? Huh? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, subcommittee reports. Uh, Councillor Culp will have to do this on Monday for the infrastructure. Uh, B is the Economic Development and Business Liaison Assistant Manager Keller. All right, if you recall, um, one of the bidders uh, for the walk bike construction project filed a bid protest. Um, the window has since expired for uh, that bidder to file an appeal uh, to the, the bid protest that was denied by Council. So this matter should now be put to rest and we're moving forward with all phases of the walk bike project as originally planned. Um, at this state, the final engineering is complete for walk bike and a pre-construction meeting is set for July 13th, at which time more details should be provided as to the final uh, construction schedule for that project. The Laurel Street flood mitigation project is also um, in the pre-construction stage. Uh, work is expected to start later this summer and this will be coordinated with the work that's going on for the Schuylkill River Trail. We do expect a two-day road closure 
of Industrial Highway during the course of that project, and we'll have some specific dates that will be provided in the upcoming weeks uh, on, on that closure. We're going to try to minimize the disturbance to the greatest extent uh, possible, uh, but there will be a little bit of disruption. And then the um, Bureau of Aviation did award the engineering grant for repaving of the T-Hanger taxiway and East Apron, the amount of 158000 um, And then, uh, obviously, on the event front, there were several events over the past month that drew thousands into Memorial Park. We had the 26th annual Volleyball Rumble uh, at the end of June, which drew approximately 4,000 people, um, 4,000 participants, I should say, to that event. So that was a record high attendance for them. Um, and as you've seen, thousands were also in attendance for the July 4th parade and the Go Forth uh, event. Um, we do have several um, upcoming events throughout the month of July. We have the On Your Park Get Set Go contest. Um, so this is a, a contest amongst uh, 10 municipalities in the region um, where you can go to your park and either take a selfie of yourself and post it onto the Health and Wellness Foundation's uh, Facebook page, uh, or you can uh, request mail certificates, uh, mail tickets that can be placed in a box at the park. So the park with the most votes wins a cash prize of five thousand um, dollars. There's other, other other prizes that are also available. That the prize money has to be spent in in that park that that won the money. Um, so we encourage everyone to go out there and um, cast your vote for that for that project. Um, we also have in Memorial Park the Trilogy Gold Cup race on August 11th through the 13th. And in concert with that event, Parks and Recreation will be uh, putting on a, uh, a concert, so bring out your pic picnic blanket and lawn chair on Saturday, August 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. where we'll have the, the Boogie Dogs um, playing that night. Hmm. Very good. Thank you. Uh, before I go any, any further forward, uh, I do want to announce officially that at 6.30 there was a scheduled meeting, a conditional use meeting, and uh, it has been canceled. The uh, developer has withdrawn the time. Uh, we may hear from them later. Uh, transportation would be Councillor Culp, and she can report on Monday. Ricketts Center, anybody here from Ricketts Center? There is a report. There is nothing else. Okay. Pottstown School Board, I don't see Mr. Heidel. Are, are you filling in? We really, I mean, you had no meetings. Okay. Great. I, I did see Mr. Green, so tell us about the library. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there are just three things that I want to highlight. The summertime is a little slow for us at the library, too, although this year we are seeing some increases in a number of areas that I can report on here briefly. The first thing I'd like to do is to thank all of those who purchased the duck race tickets. There was a record number of duck, duck race tickets that was sold this year. At this point, we don't know how much of that total sales will come to us but we're relatively sure that the number will be up compared to last year, assuming that a lot of you folks kept the library in mind when you were designating who you wanted that money to go to. The other, th the other fundraising activity I'd like to recognize is the people who do painting with a twist. If you remember, I spoke about um, getting an art lesson over a period of several hours in a very social at atmosphere with uh, beverage and drink. Uh, that's basically what painting with a twist is all about. It's in the Royersford area. It's a, a craft area that, where you can learn how to paint, and you walk away with a painting, and the painting in this particular instance was a camper at the beach that you were learning how to paint, and in that session you would have fun. So we, we got $500, which was the proceeds from that particular activity with painting, uh, painting with a twist. So I'd like to give that group a plug because they were very cooperative, and the people who were there enjoyed themselves a great deal. Um, the other area that I'd like to emphasize, too, is that uh, we have a new summer program entitled Build a Better World. I mentioned it in the last report, but I want to try to emphasize a few more aspects of uh, that that I, that I did not fully get to, I don't believe, in my earlier comments. 
The emphasis is to try to increase the range of participants from just the toddlers and the preschoolers who are always there in the library with their parents to include the, the youth, the middle school and high school, as well as to reach some of the adults. Part of the concern was that most of the activity was done during the day when most of the adults are working. So in this year's program, it's, it's arranged so that there are evening programs starting at 6 o'clock, Tuesday evenings at 6 o'clock. There will be family activity programs operating within this theme of Build a Better World. And then on um, Monday mornings at 10.30, a similar kind of activity so that you can go to either or both. And because We've just started it, although it, the program has started that as of June 15th. It's going to run through August 19th. So there's still time for participants to take place. And the idea is to get a sort of like a, a log book and a passport. You participate, or, the, or the, the youth who are attending, or the families who are attending, participate in the various activities that are scheduled. You earn prizes as you go along and participate. And at the end, on or about the 19th of August, there will be a grand prize drawing for those who have successfully completed that program. So the idea is to have all members of the family, from the very youngest through to the adults and parents, to participate in the program over the summer. Uh, it's designed to help uh, eliminate the summer slide that many students go through. It's estimated that students will lose a month, maybe two months of education over the summer where they're not in school learning things. This is designed to help combat that. So it's a worthwhile program. We are getting lots of interest in it, and we're now trying to reach the adults by having adult activities uh, planned as part of the evening. Then the last thing we want to do sort of ties in with the pre presentation we've just seen. We were able to get a, um, a Schuylkill Highlands grant, which a mat it was a matching grant. We provided $7,500, and the grant gave us an additional $7,500 for a total of $15,000 to plan a complete or comprehensive blueprint for the exterior landscaping and water treatment for the library properties. Um, the building is 100 years old, and we've spent $600,000 securing the roof, stabilizing the roof, stabilizing the foundation, which had some water infiltration in it. We've resolved those problems, but looking forward, one way to help maintain the, the current good condition is to have the water run off away from the building instead of run to the building. So this plan that we're trying to get developed through the courtesy of this grant, the Schuylkill Highlands grant, will allow us to do landscaping around the foundation, put in gardens and other kinds of activities that will allow the water to be absorbed and help reduce the minimum load <laughs> throughout, the, throughout the borough. And, uh, the important thing to realize is this grant is available for others who have properties that they would like to do something with to improve the drainage on those properties, to secure the water system, and help the town meet the goal of cutting 10% out of the uh, amount of, of, of silt and so on that gets washed away every time the rain comes through. So we're in a process now of beautifying the exterior of our building through this plan. And we'll probably be back looking for some additional monies to actually do the work there. But this fund, this $15,000, will help us plan it, map it all out, get all of the details worked out. And uh, hopefully the library will help continue with the community's efforts to have a beautiful town. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Uh, ad hoc zoning. The majority of the meeting was uh, discussing or finalizing our uh, Zoning amendment for uh, murals right. uh, on the agenda for council's consideration okay. tonight. Animal control. Councilor Mo. You mean animal committee? Committee. Oh, I I just want to say for the um, for the animal for the animal report that I'm very excited to announce. If anybody doesn't know, in June, Governor Wolf signed. House Bill 1238 into law, which offers uh, greater protections for animals and increases penalties for uh, those that are abusing animals. It also updates and clarifies the statute. So for all of us animal advocates out there that work very hard, this is, this is very good news. Okay, safety, Chair, uh, Chief Chairman Howard. <laughs> to debrief the 
the staff yet. Uh, we will do it tomorrow at staff conference, but the 4th of July was for us uh, unremarkable for police work. So that's always good when we're not making a lot of arrests and that type of thing. Uh, the traffic was handled well and Omega handled a lot of the security of the park and they did an exceptional job. So for us, uneventful is good. That's good. Uh, the other thing I'd like to talk briefly about is we had our second meeting for the parking committee. Um, we're talking just in abstracts right now. We haven't had anything, but I will let council know that at the conclusion of this meetings, when we do get to the point where we will put together something for you and we will present a report, and obviously then you can make your mind up what you want to do about, this, about the parking issues. Mm -hmm. Currently right now we're working on the signage for the, the lots uh, so that people can find the lots. People don't know where the Lessick lot is or the Reading Concourse lot or the Trinity lot. So what we're coming up with is a game plan to be able to identify that. As part of all that, we're looking at every aspect of parking and we're going to come up with a comprehensive report. However, I will tell you for, your, for anybody that if you would like to uh, come to a meeting, I'll make them be known and we will entertain anybody who wants to talk about parking. Okay. So we are not, we, we were accepting any input that anybody wants to offer. Is mm -hmm. there anything being done to measure active use? We're, we're looking at that. We're also, we're, we also looked at some of the kiosks and what, what they've been collecting. We actually have one that's kind of working off and on a little bit, but we're, we're working through that. And, uh, but then we're looking at all options available to us. Great. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the mayor's report. I'd just like to report um, again you know, echoing some of the things that the chief said, that things were very peaceful and uneventful uh, during the 4th of July and um, celebration. And some people had mixed reviews about everything, but you know, you can't please everyone, but overall it was, it was an excellent day and excellent weather as well. I did receive um, one concern regarding the time during which the parade route was advancing. And that concern involved um, a business in the 400 block of High Street. And uh, based on the concern that came to me w with uh, some type of possibly uh, false timing for the opening and closing of this business when I went by today to talk to the actual people in the morning, they were actually closed. So the fact that the report said they were open 24 hours was not true. I didn't get to talk to them yet. But I would like to suggest that if there is a parade or an event on High Street, that we could take the higher hand to check out the environment, the cleanliness of the street before the parade um, as a consideration of the overall presentation of the borough. Uh, notwithstanding some non-compliant businesses, wherever they may be, or happenstances that create the trash that we can't, you know, detect how it actually happened. So that's just one thing I'm going to be suggesting for staff to consider, that there might be some type of a detail for the street before any type of parade to make sure that uh, things are up to par. Um, I'd like to make one other suggestion as well, and I think I had talked to the solicitor briefly about the possibility of extending the Padita district to include um, from the west end, the border of Pottstown High Street, all inclusive, uh, down to the hospital, that that would all be considered downtown because there are businesses that um, expand York Street on one side, and there are also businesses that uh, go westward beyond, beyond Evans on the south, on that side east, and on the side west of York. There's other businesses. So there could be a capture there for more revenue uh, from these businesses, and it could just paint a complete picture for expansion. That's the end of my report. Thank you.
All right. Um, well, the winter weather that was fairly mild this year has allowed several of our construction projects to uh, get off on a good good foot and advance at a more rapid pace. So the board, Borough Authority's water and sewer main replacement project is ahead of schedule with uh, final paving expected by this fall. Um, the closed loop project is also running along fairly smoothly with, uh, you can see the installation of the black uh, signal poles. Uh, as well as some of the fiber optic uh, trenches that are being run underground. So um, that's coming together quite nicely as well. With the Schuylkill River Trail project along Industrial Highway, you'll notice that the guide rail is, is now up and in place. The stormwater outfalls are partially reconstructed. And currently the project is awaiting an approval to cross the Norfolk Southern easement before beginning the final paving. So um, those three projects are moving along quite well. The, there are several um, upcoming board vacancies that I'd like to uh, announce. Um, July, the Civil Service Commission has, has one opening. Um, August, the Code Board of Appeals uh, will have, also have an opening. Uh, also in August, the EAC, there will be um, uh, two, two members um, that uh, would like to be reappointed, but there are two vacancies there technically. Um, and then in August and September, the Humans Relation Committee will also have a vacancy as well. Can I just ask one question? Sure. The uh, closed loop project with flexing paint that I've seen in the corner of Pike, uh, Hanover, is that the permanent solution? I, I wasn't aware that flexi paint was being used, I think that they're using asphalt, and that is a temporary patch. Okay. Right. It will then be filled in with the, the pavers that will go back in place for concrete. It, it is pretty soft, especially it, when it's yeah. warm. Actually, yeah. I've stuck to it a few times myself. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Keller. Uh, nine is the Wincote Foundation Grant. That's you. Um, we, in fact, we, in fact, did the Windows Grand Day this year. Good. And uh, it's for a tune of about six, $60,000. Uh, and we're purchasing three items. We're getting, well, actually, four. Two community cameras. They actually came in to look at our camera system. We thought that was a great idea. So we'll be adding two cameras to our system. We are be getting a, a server at a cost of about $25,000. And we'll be getting a uh, very elaborate smart board for the detective division so that they'll be able to actually work in their office and broadcast images and pull up data. It's actually as state of the art as it gets, and that's about $7,000. Can you explain the benefits of the server? Benefits of the server, yeah. Well, our server's real old, and it's about to lock us out completely. It hasn't been replaced in years. And as you know, today's technology, so basically, this server is going to be able to update us on a lot of different things, including like our swipe cards and stuff like that. So the nice thing about this is we put in for it, we explained to them, we met with them and we explained to them our needs and they wanted to hear our needs, they didn't want to hear our wants. You know, so what we did is explain to them what we are and what we talked about and by them giving that stuff, that's money that we don't have to then allocate in next year's budget because they're picking up the cost. Ten is the construction administrative services, the walk bike project. Yeah, so um, this is a proposal from um, traffic planning and design uh, to basically uh, attend the pre bid meeting and answer any construction uh, related questions that might uh, come up during the course of the, of the walk bike project. Um, through the capabilities of the staff here, we're going to try to answer uh, most questions that the contractors may have. Um, we hope that uh, there, there aren't too many technical questions since the majority of the improvements, improvements are above ground. Um, so there's not a lot of unforeseen uh, issues that we should run into there. Um, but nonetheless, we're uh, requesting council's approval for, for this contract um, with the understanding that we, we, may not, we may not use it all, but um, we want to have it there in case. Great. Okay, we'll list that for Monday evening. Good awards, street painting and paving. You were. 
Doug. Okay, we open this for uh, line painting. Uh, we have two different uh, components to the line painting. One is for the double yellows, uh, which is uh, typically done with a larger truck. And that bid uh, right now, we haven't looked at all the uh, paperwork yet, but A1 uh, traffic control is low bid on the uh, double yellow, what we refer to as the double yellow bid. And uh, on the other bid for line painting, we have a series of crosswalks, stop bars, bike lanes, uh, arrows, parking tees. Uh, so there's a variety of different components that make up that bid. Again, A1 is the apparent low bidder at $32,004. Uh, um, so we're still going through all the paperwork and we'll have all that put together for the solicitor review then. <coughs> We also had street overlay uh, project. Uh, Joe Sucker, we've used uh, Joe the Sucker Company has been low bid on previous paving projects. They're coming in at seven hundred forty-two thousand four hundred forty-six dollars. Uh, and again, we have used them before, and uh, have been pleased with their work. We also have on the sewer side, we have replacement of manhole frames and lids. Uh, approximately 70 locations for a bid of $83,650. Uh, TLC is the uh, same company that did uh, the work last year. And we also have a cleaning and TV of the sanitary sewer lines. This will take in all the area west of the Manitoni. So this will complete all of our TV work uh, to that to that point. So we'll have the entire system, at least over the last five or six years now, cleaned in TV. So their bid was $63,193.77. Cleaver Ca uh, Cable Company was low bid, and uh, they had done this work also previously for us. Any questions? When does uh, Pizer Camera is there a report given to the homeowner for recommendations, if there's roots or anything? Well, this is all mainline stuff. This is the mainline pipeline itself, okay. and then the camera head can turn and look at where the lateral connection is to the main. Now, sometimes you can see tree, tree roots coming down, or you can see other defects. If it looks serious enough, then yes, we, we talk to the, the homeowner about it. But this camera cannot go up that, that <coughs> lateral and actually look at the, the customer's uh, lateral in any detail. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yerger. 12 zoning ordinance amendment for murals. Okay. I think council's aware we've had discussion about changing certain provisions of the zoning ordinance specifically relating to murals and, and how they're defined and, and how we will permit them. And uh, I know the ad hoc zoning committee has discussed this for a number of months and invited artists to the table to talk about the requirements. Um, you should have in front of you a detailed outline, which uh, the committee, I understand, has basically recommended and is supporting uh, changes to the ordinance consistent with the, the terms of this outline. Um, again, I. We can certainly go through everything in the document, but uh, we're looking at new definitions, both from a traditional mural to a large-scale mural. Uh, there's a, also a definition to uh, the, how we define sign. Uh, in addition, then there's the steps necessary that are required to uh, paint the mural or how it's to be painted uh, with different regulations. I understand, again, there was input provided by a number of sources in order to get this far. Uh, I think the question that, that council has to address from a procedural standpoint at this point is if, if council is supportive of the concept of changing the ordinance consistent with the outline, um, are you comfortable with uh, taking action on Monday night to authorize the preparation and advertisement of the ordinance and public hearing together, uh, give you a time frame that would not be ready or could not be ready for the August meeting but if you allowed our office to move ahead in that fashion, it would be ready for public hearing and adoption at the September meeting. Um, the other option would be 
to simply allow us to take the outline, put it in an ordinance form, which, again, no changes, but certainly you could actually see the ordinance before we put it together for public hearing. I think we found over the years that when we put something in an ordinance form, sometimes it's a little more difficult to read because you're taking parts of the ordinance and changing it, and unless you compare it with the entire zoning ordinance, it makes it a little more difficult to comprehend. But the outline is really, I think, an easier tool for everybody to look at to see what the ordinance is going to, one, have in it and what's changing. So it's really up to council uh, to decide how you want to proceed. If we have the intermediate step of preparing the ordinance uh, for next month, then again, the public hearing typically takes 60 days. So we're backing up the adoption from the September meeting to the October meeting. So that's totally up to council. If anybody has any questions about what's in the outline, Ryan, myself, Justin can uh, try to address those. So to be clear, this, this still includes the maintenance agreement with the, the property owner. Yes. So the, the whole thing that the, yes. the Potsdam Arts had the issue with. It does. Okay. Here's my issue with this, this whole ordinance. I mean, whatever, I understand we're changing the definition, making it easier to, to prepare a mural. But the, that maintenance agreement is the sticking point. And, and here's, I get it, we don't want the mural to fall into disrepair. You look around at the properties that are in disrepair, we can't even, you know, control that, get that under control. And we're, we're going to stifle something that's trying to make the community better. You look at that lot now, they cleaned up and worked so hard on it. Already things are growing all over it, it looks like crap again. Because we're, we're holding it up with this. And it's not going to look any better because the, apparently the owner won't sign the agreement. So there's not going to be a mural and that lot's still going to look like crap. And there's nothing we can do about it. But, but instead, we're going to make these yeah. rules and say, oh, if you try to make this look nice, you're going to have to commit to making, you know, keeping it look nice or pay the pay the penalty. Or we got property owners that have properties that look god-awful, and we can send codes out, and we can, it's not going to change it. So I, I, I really yeah. have an issue with this. I mean, the difference between a sign and uh, like a 19th century home that needs hundreds of thousands of dollars repair. We just go in there and repaint it for a couple hundred dollars. And that's really all this is about, just getting access to be able to do that without paying you know, up to $3,000 in court fees to do so. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, Dennis, about the L&I and the properties. Um, you know, painting a, painting a sign on this particular property is not going to do, that property owner, you said yourself, they're, they're not going to do anything to step up the condition and the and the maintenance of the property even with a sign on it so then it's going to have a welcome to Pottstown sign on it that's going to be overgrown with weeds and 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 debris and silt and it's going to be worse well now i now come on you mean to tell me that that group that's doing all this for volunteer uh, you know their own hours their own money fundraise they're going to make that look nice and then let weeds grow over it well this ordinance is not specific to this no, no, I get it. No, no, wait, wait, Dennis. So, are you telling me that this group is is now going to volunteer to forever maintenance of that property? Well, I can't imagine that they're going to let weeds grow over the sign that they worked hard on and, and done for free. I mean, I, I can't imagine anybody would waste their time doing that. I think it's very unlikely they'll you know, go into this repair for this particular project, but this is supposed to encompass everything that comes in the future. So. The other thing, we, we need to prevent any liability falling on the borough. If the property owner doesn't maintain the mural, et cetera, uh, we need leverage to make it corrected. And not at the well, well, expense. then we need more leverage to get these properties up to, I, I mean, we're worried about a mural. I, I mean, I can name five properties right now off the top of my head that look like they're falling down. Uh, we're getting too involved in that nitty, we've got bigger problems than somebody making a nice mural and, and trying to make the town look nice. I, I think a liability agreement protects the artist as well, though. Uh, is that correct? Because, I mean, an artist is, is going on to somebody's property and, and doing work, and then that property owner can actually come back on the artist without any kind of agreement in place. I, I, don't, I don't want to belabor this because it's clear what's going to happen, so. Okay. And uh, is there anyone opposed to putting it on the agenda for Monday evening? I am. Okay. Anyone else? We'll list it for Monday. Thank you. 13 CCLU mural request.
Anyone here from CCLU? Yes. Oh. Uh, sorry, without being familiar with your process, um, do you want me to do a presentation, Ginny? Is that how this is going to work? Or? Well, we, we have the email that you sent to the program. Right. And with all the and, uh, photos. We also have a, a rendering of what it is you'd like to achieve. So the purpose for tonight's meeting is not about an application for the mural. That's the next step. Um, I worked with Keith Place to try to figure out exactly what we needed to do first. Because our proposal is to put a Latino-themed mural on municipal property. So he said we needed to get approval from the council for that. Mm -hmm. um, the two places, you'll, if you look at the material you have, the two places that we're proposing <coughs> are um, on Beach Street across from the Ricketts Center. The municipality owns a, a <coughs> large brick wall uh, that's part of the municipal garage. Okay, and in your email you mentioned uh, the municipal garage at Beach and Grand. That's so correct. So you're talking, the surface you're talking about is visible from Beach Street. That's correct, it faces okay. Beach. That wall, I didn't, I mean, I measured the whole wall. The wall must run something over 100 feet. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about putting a 40 by 10 mural on a portion of that wall, a clear portion that doesn't have any trees obstructing the view on the beach. Uh, the other location that's possible for us is on the um, carousel building, on the wall that's facing the Manitani, so that as you're driving on King going west, you're seeing that uh, east facing wall. So both of those walls are, um, we're back to what you were talking about, sort of unappealing walls, particularly the carousel walls in bad repair. Okay. The mural that we're proposing is going to be on signboard so that it would be able to be mounted and cover the defects in the wall. The location on Beach Street, uh, my understanding is that Council's considering tearing that wall down at some point. And because this mural will be on signboard, when you get to that point, we'd be able to on mount the sign, on mount the mural, and move it to, a, you know, find another location and move it at that point. So, you know, what we're requesting right now is permission to mount a, mount a mural that's on signboard on municipal property. And then we'll go through the whole sign, if we can get that approval, then we'll go through the whole sign application process. Okay. The sign board, is that, what kind of material are we talking about for the sign board? The sign board is, I'm not sure how thick, maybe about three-eighths of an inch. It's not plywood, it's, it's sign board. You know, it's a thin surface uh, that's weatherproof and you paint on it. The mural will have a, a graffiti-proof coating put on the, <coughs> the final oil paint, the final painting. Justin, can you, can you answer the question about the sign board? Is that something that was... Yeah, the way that the ordinance is written is it's uh, any hand-painted um, mural that's either painted directly onto a, a wall surface or mounted or affixed to the wall surface. So that would be permissible under our proposed ordinance. I was just thinking of the material for the signboard. That's a good material to adhere onto the, the concrete. That it won't ruin under, you know, in between the mural. I'd have to look at what the specific material is, but I'm sure between us and L and I, we could figure out a uh, signboard that would be appropriate. Um, we have a professional muralist that has uh, done the sketch. I think there's a sketch attached to your material. Um, she has exterior murals mounted in the area, um, and she's got a website that you could look at. You know, and if you need to know specific material, I can get that from her. You would need that. Yeah. But I, my guess is, isn't that part of the actual sign application yes. process? Yeah. I mean, you know, at this point, we're not even there. We're right. yeah. one mm -hmm. step before that, asking for your permission to proceed. Okay, as I understand it, I think council could make a decision on the Beach Street location. Uh, as far as the carousel building, Burrow owns that building, but we have a tenant. Right. And right. I think we need discussions with the tenant before we go forward with that. So, we can do a little homework and listen for Monday evening and see if there's anything we can do at that time. Well, I hope, hope. This proposed ordinance that we're going to discuss, my thing, mm -hmm. so if that goes through, 
and then we say yes, they can put the, the mural on, on the uh, Beach and Grand Street property. Well, then we're going to maintain that mural as a, as a borough because okay. that's what's in the agreement. Well, the, that would be part of the part of the agreement because the borough is the owner. So when you would vote on that, you're also voting to take the liability. Well, well just so we're clear, the ordinance or proposed ordinance requires some type of maintenance agreement. Uh, obviously, the borough has interest in it when we're dealing with third parties uh, who own private property. There would be different issues associated with a maintenance agreement for borough-owned property. And again, each case would be negotiated between the property owner and the artists that do the work or the organization that does the work. And again, all the ordinance re is requiring is some type of maintenance agreement in order to protect all the parties, whatever their respective interests are. So it so, doesn't necessarily mean that, it, depending on what the agreement is between the artist and the borough, it doesn't necessarily mean the borough is going to be 100% responsible for that maintenance. That's, that's an agreement that is made between that, the that, two parties. That will be part of the next step as they're talking right. about when they present what they would like to do. And the borough then, since they are the property owner, certainly has a little more input as to what that agreement's going to say than if you're dealing with a third party and the artist organization because we have different interests uh, as the owner just like any owner would have. So I, I think there are certainly issues that we have to deal with if and when that you come back to us. And, and uh, we and, were aware that this I, maintenance agreement would be an issue. Correct. So again, given a lot of the uncertainties of the future, use of that building, mm -hmm. everybody's going to want to talk openly and, and negotiate that agreement in, in an open fashion so everyone's protected. But uh, I think the question that for right now, if you decide to list it on the agenda, is which building would you prefer mm -hmm. to allow the mural to be uh, affixed to? Well, since I can't speak for the, the tenant at the carousel, I would suggest we address only the Beach Street property. Well, I, I think we're rushing into this. I, I mean, you guys don't seem like you're you're ready to put the tiny mural tomorrow. So I think I think I think we could have time to have have the tenants involved at the, at the King Street Carousel. I mean, let's not half-ass it. Let's let's get all the facts and and talk to all the appropriate people. Do you think we can have, I mean, do you think we can reach out to the carousel like the, before Monday and get some input from the from the people of the carousel? Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. And if I could make one other point to that, because this is going to be mounted on signboard, if it goes on Beach Street initially, when Beach Street comes down, you know, we could pursue possibly the carousel or another location because it'll be on signboard. Oh, and yes, okay, and the monies that we're getting, we actually have the monies lined up for the muralist and the mounting of this. And the, um, you know, we've got kids lined up that are going to be working on it. Sorry, you're talking in my ear. We've got kids lined up that are going to, supposed to work on it in August <laughs> from the Hill School and from Pottstown School District are going to participate with the muralist in doing the painting. So, we, you know, it would be nice not to hold it up and if that meant Beach Street for however long the Beach Street wall is up, that would be fine. Are there two murals? No, it's a single mural. It's 10 by 40. Um, but just one. It'll be on multiple signboards because signboards are, I forget, 8 by 10 maybe, I think, was the size of the signboard. Well, okay. Do you want to say Yeah, that? we would have to. I mean, obviously, we have to wait till our ordinances is Right. complete. So you, you might you might not be able to paint on this if we're all voting on it, but right. but not further much further out than that I don't think. See if you can give an answer for the carousel. Okay. Uh, I just want to mention that we raised the funds um, which is about seven thousand um, dollars and the funding is coming from um, a local grant as well as a grant from the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts. And part of the stipulation is that at least the project um, involves the community in Hill School and 
Cloud Sound School kids are involved already, and that we start this summer. So that's that's why we're coming to you now to say, okay, if it can be moved from one place to another, you know, we we think it, it's a good idea. It's really a very neat drawing. I, if we had a picture of it, I'd like to show it to the to everybody that's here tonight because it's the, the kids in the drawing are actual kids in Pottstown. Did you send the picture yes. to them? Yes. You should have a picture. Yeah, we have. We yeah, yes, we have a picture. Yes. But it's really neat. I was hoping we could Thank share you. it with the audience. I can sort of cast around if you really want to do that. I have a, a loose one. Yeah, if they if they're really interested. I, I will just add for Council's consideration that um, we did broach the subject a little bit with the, the tenants at the carousel, and they were they were kind of lukewarm to the idea of having the mural on, on their building. They may have future um, expansion plans along that facade as well. They may have ideas for their own mural. I, I'm not sure, um, but I will I want to double check with them, so we'll reach out one more time and just, just make sure that that site's definitely um, not, not an option. Thank you. Okay, 14, we have board vacancies. And I think you mentioned some of them, Mr. Keller. Uh, Civil Service Commission, one six-year term. We have one applicant, Mr. Amato. That's from the appointment. Correct. Correct. Uh, code Board of Appeals, one three-year term. Any applicants? No. Environmental Advisory Board, two three-year terms. D is Human Relations Commission, one vacant term to expire May 8, 2021. Correct. And we have none for those. Okay. 15 is hard. Uh, the documents are uh, in your packet. Uh, 61 North Franklin Street. 61 North Franklin Street, the porch. C is 18 South Street. D is 60 North Hanover Street. That's that group. Any issues on those? Eighteen South Charlotte. Okay. Okay. No issues. We'll list those for Monday. And then Harb, those uh Administratively approved, we have two, 261 Chestnut Street and 715 High Street. No issues. We'll list that for Monday evening. Uh, it's time for comments from citizens present. Thank you. All right, Michelle uh, Chasen. <laughs> If you could come up to the, sure, go ahead. My understanding is you've uh, gotten a copy of this. Yep, she they do. Uh, my understanding is my wife certain away with it. I don't know if you've had time to uh, read it or not. Uh, I don't know what the protocol is here. Would you like me just you, to read you have, it to you for the record? You have record? three minutes to give your comments. So, <laughs> so kind of paraphrase it or what? Sure. Or read fast. So we're basically uh, concerned about backyard burning in our community. Um, we live on the corner of North Evans and Burbine. Uh, we did a rather thorough study. I'm a biology professor, 47 years. Last 19 at Monco West. Taught my class tonight. Came over here. So. I've looked into this in many different ways. Um, we've looked for some positives to burning this trash, these open pit burnings, wood pile burnings, various sorts. Uh, I can't come up with one positive thing that it offers our community. And on the other hand, there's a lot of negatives, uh, mainly what it can do potentially to uh, the health of the human beings that have to inhale it. And that's a danger to both the people who are burning the wood and also the neighbors that have to inhale the particulate matter um, in the surrounding properties. So um, 
there's some rather staggering statistics that, um, you know, one pound of this smoke pollution um, deadlier uh, than inhaling cigarette smoke, you know, over a prolonged period of time. Uh, lots of carcinogens that can be damaging to human health. Uh, if you can smell it, it is entering your body. Uh, a lot of this is very particulate matter. It's very small. I mean, the concentrations can be uh, parts per uh, billion, parts per trillion. But it's enough that if it gets into your body over the long-term effect, it can be a significant health hazard. So that's a real concern, I think, to anybody that's involved with this or that's near it. Um, one hour of exposure to wood smoke can lower the human body's immune defense 25 to 40 percent. It lowers the body's defense mechanisms to fight infections. Uh, there have been studies that have shown it will lower your white blood cell count, all the things that tend to protect us uh, against things that are potentially injurious to our body. So we're concerned about all this. I mean, if you can smell it, you're inhaling it, and it's in your body. And it can build up over time. Uh, the other thing is it just generally detracts from the quality of human life, that you have to be outdoors in an evening and have to smell this stuff uh, and deal with that. It permeates the house. Uh, we smell this from our neighbors. It's not a good way to live. So um, my conclusion would be, therefore, uh, I don't see any advantage in any way to this wood burning or these open pit burnings. Uh, there are no advantages. It's not an enhancement to human life. And there are many disadvantages for all the parties that are involved uh, that have to be subject to it. It has no redeeming values, and it should not be allowed in the Pottstown community. And that's our stand on it. Thank you. Did you want to add something to it? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just to piggyback off of what my husband has mentioned, um, just from personal experience um, of having a next door neighbor who was illegally burning, um, created a fire pit and illegally burning it, several neighbors calling the fire department and um, including myself. And to this day, that fire pit is still intact and ready to be used at any time. So we've been keeping an eye on it. We're also dealing with indoor burning um, and the smoke. Uh, it permeates our house. And I've been to the borough, I've been to the fire company numerous times, and what I'm told is just call the fire company, just call the fire company. Well, I've done that several times, and nothing has been done about it. And now they're want wanting to um, allow fire pits to be burned, and um, like <coughs> my husband said, we did numerous studies on this. Um, I kind of looked into other townships who have a no burn ordinances, um, especially because of the close proximity of the houses, which are no different than here in Pottstown. Um, my neighbor's house is only 20, 20, about 20 feet away from me to his property line. So um, I look at it this way. Do I have a right to breathe clean, fresh air? Does that take precedence over neighbors who are enjoying a fire pit? Do I have to smell the smoke coming into my house, which I have numerous times? How many times do I have to say to call the fire department and inhale that smoke till it's finally this problem goes away or stops? And I feel as a taxpayer, um, I deserve the protection uh, to be protected from these kind of incidences. I've lived in this township for 56 years. I work and teach at our school districts, Pottsgrove School Districts and other districts as a uh, substitute teacher. And I just, I, I live in a house that was my grandmother's, it was my mother's, and now it's mine. And I don't feel like I should, I've never had problems like this. I'm not a complaining kind of person. Um, you know, such as the carbon monoxide and dioxin, just to name a few emissions from burning wood. Not to mention the soot that builds up on the aluminum siding of my house. Um, like I mentioned, other townships, such as Gilbertsville, do not allow any burning other than cooking, maybe a cooking grill. Um, should we be any different? 
Um, what about people who are, are have these fire pits? They're going to be oblivious to weather conditions such as humidity that prevents smoke from rising and instead it permeates out towards other people's properties, which has been my experience with intense smoke inside my house where my pets were. Uh, and another off-the-cuff uh, question, does this affect their natural gas lines? Um, it, it, you know, is outdoor burning a hazard? So um, is there a solution to this? Um, what is the borough going to do to protect me and my family? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Lisa Mueller, please. <coughs> Hello. Hi. I came up before you a few months ago and, and um, let you know about something that was going on in Pottstown in June, this past June, uh, the Montgomery County studio tour, artist studio tour. And I just really wanted to update you on how it went, which was very well, and also um, let you know a few things that happened that I think are helpful for the town. Um, in, in the light of the fact that we'd like to, again, participate next year, and we're hoping it will go as smoothly as it did this year. Um, we had four artists opening their studios to the public, with a total of 14 artists exhibiting throughout those studios. We had between 150 and 200 people visiting the borough, many for the first time. Their comments were very positive about the borough, Many of them ate here and hung out and saw the carousel or rode on the carousel, which was open that day, or um, sorry, for the weekend. Um, so uh, we met as artists, the studios that were open, we met together to coordinate our efforts to present a professional uh, presence here in Pottstown as a, as a group. And uh, one of the things that we were, that we wanted to make very clear is sort of wayfinding for people who are coming to Pottstown for the first time, which included plenty of signage that we were putting up. So uh, we wanted to, in particular, thank the borough and Mark Flanders for his go ahead on the signage for us. Um, we really appreciated that. It helped, uh, it helped a lot of people find all the studios, which are tucked away in some odd little corners. And also, um, Councilperson Cheryl Miller, who was uh, really very helpful for us as well. Um, so that's sort of the update on the Montgomery County Studio Tour. We look forward to doing it again next year, as I mentioned. It's a county-wide tour, but Pottstown um, really attracted a lot of people, and I think we can um, count on doing that, doing more than 200 people next year. So. Oh, the other thing I wanted to comment on was the uh, the proposed uh, ed, um, mural ordinance um, rev revision. Uh, I think it's extremely helpful. I think it helps out a lot of artists because it streamlines th their application process and makes it a lot less expensive for them to to propose a mural, which is which is wonderful. And I also think that. One of the things that it does uh, much more clearly is define the responsibilities, the art because it is a, an agreement between the borough, the property owner, and the artist. And I think that it helps to define what the responsibilities are that already exist between these three parties. So um, in, in light of what you're talking about earlier, I think that that's a very helpful part of this ordinance. So I hope that gets the yes vote, and thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Uh, yes, Ron Williams, please. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be out of commission for, for a little while. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize uh, to our community about one thing that took place on uh, Monday evening. Uh, there during the uh, preparation for the sample performance by our uh, uh, laser, uh, uh, laser John, we call him, uh, entertainer, uh, there was some inappropriate uh, music uh, with inappropriate language that was uh, put on uh, 
by one of the technicians simply because we needed to do some, he needed, felt, the group needed to do some filler time while they were trying to prep the fog machines and whatnot. Uh, we talked to them very quickly as soon as we, we were aware of, of the kind of language that was being presented in the music. And um, uh, they corrected themselves and they apologized. They just uh, simply grabbed some kind of music. They didn't really think about it. We had a lot of children there. Uh, and I apologize to the parents, to the families. Uh, Next. Mr. Williams, would you address counsel? No, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> no. Next, I, uh, well, I, I, I wanted to apologize to the community um, for that event. Uh, last year, on the 4th of July, I attended a, um, a, a 5K, well, I, I, I worked with the 5K race that we put on every year, and uh, that began at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, by 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, everybody that had come to that event was gone from town, and there was no other activity in this town. Um, it bothered me. It bothered a number of uh, folks that uh, uh, are within the community. And um, we got together to talk about what we don't want it to ever happen again. Uh, the history of this community is, goes back to the beginning of, of our nation. The recognition of the Independence uh, Day activities is, is, is important to us and should be our strength in, in celebrating and letting our other communities become aware of who we are and why we're here. So we uh, developed a collaboration uh, and a committee of about uh, 26 people from around the community, including uh, uh, Cheryl uh, Miller, who is one of our top committee uh, chair people. Uh, we have uh, representatives from organizations that, uh, from uh, community, Montgomery County Community College. Um, let me go. I can give you a list, but but it was a it was a uh, community collaboration. We weren't uh, uh, strong. There was no one strong person in this, and we came together and we got. I, I just want to thank. The uh, few people in the process of, of, of putting on this celebration. We, uh, I want to thank the police department, first of all. They worked very closely with us in, in, in giving us some idea of where we were going, what we needed to do. I want to thank the fire police, the emergency, uh, uh, the EMS folks, and uh, the Rotary Club. Thank you. Counselor's general discussion. Counselor Roberts. Uh, I just want to say I thought the parade and uh, the activities down at the park uh, over at the carousel were great. Um, it was nice to see the community. A lot of free uh, and low cost things that were happening. Um, so no one should have been bored and no one should have said there's nothing to do. Good. Counselor Miller. Um, I'd like to just piggyback a little bit on the mayor's uh, mayor report about some of the businesses on the 400 block of High Street that concern was also brought to my attention and while I agree that we should preview that before we have events I would like to take one step further and say we need to preview that every week because <laughs> I have brought the 400 block of High Street to the attention of license and inspection on many occasions I don't think there's any need to wait for a particular event I think that these businesses are part of the community and they need to accept that they're part of the community and take responsibility just like all of us have that have properties um, to, to keep it clean and neat and presentable. Um, on the go forth, I, I, I agree with Mr. Williams. There were so many people to thank and to recognize. It, it is just phenomenal. It takes a village to put on an event like that. Um, we did a little preview for the PCTV network on the Pottstown Borough Buzz, and I want to thank Gus Tellus for a wonderful job that he did in filming and putting it together so quickly because he already had it ready this afternoon. So you can view it on the PCTV network or on YouTube and check out the July edition on the Pottstown uh, Borough Buzz. So it was, it really was, it really was a wonderful weekend, and we learned a lot our first year, and we certainly are going to make some changes and improvements the next year, and just keep keep them coming. Good. Thank you, Councillor Brasco. 
Although I did say uh, last meeting I would not be able to make it tonight, but you know, thanks to some uh, you know light traffic and uh, uh, tweet on Twitter, I was able to Good. rush in here real quick. <laughs> but, uh, so happy to be here. Good, Mayor. Yeah, I believe that um, <clears throat> what we've seen over the past couple years is that we have two entities that are able to facilitate um, handling the parade and uh, festivities for July 4th. And I'd really like to see the, the same community of support be able to alternate between those two entities, and that would be um, a wonderful show of collaboration and also a wonderful show of um, shared utility in the resources. Um, so both both entities, the Rotary Club and Independence Day Limited, had uh, portions in the celebration this weekend and have both shown themselves able to facilitate the parade. And it would be a great show of uh, collaboration and community unity to see an alternation of those two entities with the same support each year. May, Mayor, may I just correct one thing? Uh, sure. The Go Forth Committee is not the Independence Day Living in. I know that it yeah. isn't. They're two separate. The, and the Rotary Club. I understand. Did the okay, so. The, I understand. Right. They're two entities. That's what I said. Rotary Club and Independence Day Limited that have shown themselves capacitant to facilitate the Fourth of July activity. So it would be good for those two groups to discuss and those who supported to be able to support each one amicably in alternative years. That's all that I'm suggesting. That's it. No, what Thank I'm you. saying is the Go Forth Committee put I on. understand. Okay. <laughs> There's I'm fully, here. I'm fully uh, awake. There's no confusion. This is just a suggestion. Thank you. Can I, sorry, can I just add one thing? Sorry, this is uh, another positive. Uh, congratulations to Angel Overa from Potsdam High School for being queen, uh, crowned the uh, Fourth of July Queen. Great. I don't know what more I can add, so uh, I will sum it up by saying I'd like to thank everyone, uh, every individual, every organization who helped in any of the events in this past week. Uh, it, it was wonderful to be in Potsdam again. Uh, that's all I have. There is no executive session tonight. We may have one Monday evening. Uh, last thing I can think of is hats off to Mr. and Mrs. Krause. Thanks for all you've done. Meeting adjourned.